So Power BI just released a fantastic new update, which includes data labels that you control a little bit with measures. I'll be honest, this ruined a video I was about to upload. No worries though. All I've done is what I've made what I wanted to do even cooler. This video, we're going to look at how to control our data labels using measures and using transformations or expressions within Deneb. Before we go any further though, I will tell you that to do what we're going to do in this video, you'll need to create a top N measure. And I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. I can only say if you want to learn how to do that, if you don't already know, check out this blog by Formu. This is how I learned to do it myself back in the day. This is a blog from 2018. So I guess that's pretty much when I learned how to, to create a top end measure. But back to what we want to do today. So what are we going to do? I want to say, if I select one, then the top one or the top three or the top five, whatever I select, data labels look different. They stand out more because sometimes it's very important to be able to do that. The other slicer is irrelevant. It's just we slice through the different cities. So let's see how we can do this. So this, um, what we have at this point is a very standard, you know, Vega light visual. If you don't know any of the aspects that are in this visual, as ever, previous videos, there is nothing in here that I haven't already covered in the previous videos. So let's get to it straight to it. And we're going to focus just, just on our text mark because that is the mark, um, that, you know, has our data labels in it. So currently we have mark type text and I've done the Y offset as minus 10. So it sits just a little bit above the bars. What we want to do now is look at how how we can change this mark to make the top value stand out. And honestly, you can do a lot with a little bit. And I'll show you what I mean right now. So my Y offset, I'm going to add a comma so I can add more. So what I'm now going to write is I'm going to say, I want to change, let's say for example, the color of the font, right? So usually you would just do something like color, um, like this, and then you would say color, whatever, something red. And when you do that, the color of all the values are red, but we don't want that. What I'm going to say is I want the top few to be red, the top three or whatever I select in my slicer, right? So instead of saying color red, I'm going to, I'm going to say color and then I'm going to write EXPR, my expression. And my expression allows me to like set criteria. So in this case, I'm going to say the expression is so datum. And then I'm going to use my top end datum. A little SpaceX annoys me. Um, yeah. Temp top end. So the values of top N is the values that I'm using. And the criteria is going to be if it's less than one, I'll get to that in a second why I'm saying less than one. Okay. So if the temp top N is less than one, what I want to have is a just standard, let's just say black, right? Otherwise, I want to have red. Now, unless I've made some mistakes, which happens quite often, this hopefully will work. Huh, didn't make a mistake. So as you can see pretty much straight away, this value is red. All the others are black. Why is that? Well, here I've selected one. Now three and then five. And as you can see, as I do that, 
the colors are changing. Now I know that's not ideal because changing color has issues with you know people who you know color blindness, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to make more changes. Don't worry. This is just the initial change. And um, it stands out, but not so much. Um, so let's improve that. But before we do that, I'm going to show you why I've written less than one. And it's really easy to show you how. If I instead say, change my text field from max temperature, and I want to say um, the top N temperature, you'll see it now because they're null, right? So null is less than one. Why are they null? Well, oh, because I've only selected one. Now I select three, now I select five. If I remove the slicer completely, they're all selected so they all have their own value. That's why we say in this situation, when we're using the top N, we can just simply say less than one. And of course, you know, what we're using here is a slicer. If you wanted to, you could just apply, use the top N and just apply that that's instead of a slicer, just use it as a filter. So it's always one or three, whatever you define. In this situation, I'm saying I want the user to define because it's quite cool and can be helpful, but it doesn't have to be with a slicer. You can just apply this field as a filter on the actual visualization. So let's go back to it. So I'm gonna change my field back to instead of temperature top n, just a max temp, and then we are back to where we have just this one red value. So what else can we do? I think it would be helpful if we also said, make it look different, not just in color, but also the style. And to do that, and now this is the thing that I love, right? Every other change that we will now make to the text, all I've got to do is copy and paste. That's all I have to do, right? So watch this, copy, obviously add the comment, paste. So now I don't have to write all the other stuff again. I can just change it to what I want it to be because now instead of saying um, color, I can say font weight, right? And I go font weight, exactly the same criteria. Nothing changes. Only thing I have to change now is this. Instead of saying black, I'm going to say I want it to be normal, which means that if it's not within the top N, it's going to be the same weight. Otherwise, it's going to be bold. Now you see that is a little bit better because now we have not just a color, but you can see it's for me, it stands out a lot more because it's boom, red and bold. Again, if we then change the slicer, the top three and the top five. We're going to do more. We're going to just do more and more copy and paste. Um, so again, comma, paste. Now not we've got font weight, which is the bold. We've got the color. Now what I want to do, and this is pretty cool. I think this is probably my favorite one actually, or the combination, whatever, I'll just show you. Instead of saying color, now you'll see here, I've got the Y offset is minus 10. So I wanna do something different. I'm gonna delete this. You'll see it's that, we're not gonna leave it that way. But what I wanna say now is here, Y offset. Now I love this. Now this is great for what we're doing right now. Also, it's very helpful when you have plus and negative numbers because it's difficult to control where the text label sits sometimes. So using this technique, the location of the text mark based on the value, very helpful. So the Y offset, I want to say if it's less than one, so if it's unselected, if it's not in the top, whatever I've selected, I want it to have a certain value and I want to be 10 and I want this to be minus 10. And now we can see how that's going to look. It's gonna look like that, which I love. I will make one quick change because the black and the purple isn't working very well, not easy to see. So now I'll change that to white. That, I really like that because now these values, the top values absolutely stand out. I mean, it's really clear 
Fair enough for three reasons. The color, if the color is something that you can't see, you have the boldness. And on top of the boldness, you have that it's literally in a different location. So it really stands out, these top values now. Same, one, three, five. Wonderful. One thing which is also possible is also controlling the size. So if we again do this wonderful bit of um, copy paste, two things. So font size, what you could do is say the font size is going to be eight if it's not in the top whatever. Otherwise, let me just take that. Otherwise, make it 12, for example, right? So again, copying and pasting, but I've been, now I've got font size. So now these are really small values. So maybe that's too much you're starting to think, which I understand maybe if you apply too many things, it's, I don't know, maybe it doesn't look good. Um, I personally still think it can be helpful. Maybe they're too small against too big. Play around with the sizes. However, what I really like about this is that you can actually do something completely different, which is, or not completely different, even further, which is to say, just give it a zero. Because if you give it a zero, it's not there, right? Now, in this visualization, that might not make a lot of sense. But if you consider, if you have a data set or a visualization with a really a really big data range. It's really messy and doesn't look good and actually hinders your analysis if you have every single data label. What we're just saying now is, and again, consider it's a really long data range, only show me the top few. That can be really helpful. So instead of having like a line chart, for example, if it has that having a line chart where there's like values everywhere, every single value, you can say, only show me the top whatever. You could even, if it's a huge day range, you could even say like top top 20, you know, whatever. You decide the number yourself. Um, so this is something that I also find very helpful if you're looking at how to, you know, dynamically control your data labels. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go back to how it was before, because I think maybe for this particular example, it's better to have all the data labels. So I'll go 10, 12, and maybe it's better to have it like a more of a difference. Yeah. So again, all these things together, you may think are a bit too much. That's fine. Because there are so many different things you can do. I mean, really, there are so many different things. If you consider, if you look at the documentation from Vega Light, it tells you all the different things. I mean, you can just go through the list. Another example, which is, you know, maybe really extreme, but let's just do it for the sake of doing it so you can see, is the angle as well, like this. So you could also say like, you know, um, angle. So I'm gonna go angle and I'm gonna stay. Now I want, if it's that, let's call it whatever. Be five. If it's not, then then make it zero, right? So now you have the label angles like that. Maybe now I have to push them down a little bit more. I don't know. Um, that you can control so many different things. I mean, I would never do that. I can't think of a use case. I'm sure there is one, um, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. You can do it though. If you need to do it, you can do it. If you want to do it, you can do it. Just go through and look at all the different. And properties, and you, on all those properties, you can uh, apply an expression. Cool, right? I mean, for me, really helpful. What I would say is, look at this, use this very small bit of code, which you can copy and paste and do so many things with, and just play around using the documentation from Vega Light and see what you can change. Um, very helpful thing to have. And uh, yeah, I hope you like this. I hope this idea makes sense to you, and you can see how you could use it in the reports and how it could benefit. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of this idea in the comments. Um, if you do anything different, of course, let me know. If you have any other ideas, it's always cool to know. And uh, yeah, um, the usual YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, etc. And um, 
Thank you very much. Enjoy all this and goodbye.